डियर स्टूडेंट्स टेक अप वन आइडिया मेक दैट वन आइडिया योर लाइफ थिंक ऑफ इट ड्रीम ऑफ इट लिव ऑन दैट आइडिया लेट द ब्रेन मसल्स नर्व्स एवरी पार्ट ऑफ योर बॉडी बी फुल ऑफ दैट आइडिया एंड जस्ट लीव एवरी अदर आइडिया एलोन दिस इज द वे टू सक्सेस थैंक यू हियर इज द न्यू वीडियो ऑन एटॉमिक स्ट्रक्चर गो थ्रू इट एंड शेयर योर व्यूज थैंक यू hello students today we will discuss about atomic structures each type of element consist of very small particles these are the building block particles of element these particles we call atom atoms of same element are identical in all aspects but the atoms of different elements are different in characteristics as well as in structure so in this chapter we are going to discuss different type of atomic models under following heads number 1 is dalton's theory number 2 discovery of fundamental particles number 3 thomson's model of an atom number 4 rutherford's model and the fifth one is concept of atomic number and mass number the sixth head is drawback of rutherford's model seven one is electromagnetic waves and eighth one is planck's quantum theory and the last one is bohr's model so we are going to discuss one by one dalton's theory according to this concept it is the pre concept about uh, before 1897 then atom is the fundamental particle of an element or the substance all matter is composed of atoms these are the tiny or smallest particles of the matter all atoms of a given element are identical whereas the atoms of different elements are different now at atoms are the particles which cannot be further cut or divided into smaller particles so these are rather indivisible and indestructible particles they cannot be destroyed they cannot be made now after that in the beginning of 19th century number of experiments were carried out with discharging tube a discharging tube is uh, an evacuated uh, tube having a gas and uh, with uh, with the help of two electrodes anode and cathode electric discharge is carried out with the help of high voltage uh, scientist found that a certain type of indivis invisible rays emanate from cathode and these travel uh, towards the anode and when these rays strike to the wall of the discharging tube these are going to produce fluorescence so these type of rays which are invisible and uh, 
uh, uh, produce a uh, fluorescent when it strike on the wall of the discharging tube so these rays uh, rather have um, following properties when these rays are allowed to fall on a paddle wheel they are going to rotate it it means the rays consist of particles having mass and velocity because uh, particles with mass and velocity will have momentum and rate of change of momentum is force so rather these rays apply force on pedal wheel means these rays consist of particles having mass these particles are called electrons and uh, it is rather it is uh, found in other experiments that these rays uh, get deflected uh, in electric and magnetic field when magnetic field is applied on these rays these rays move or bend on a circular path and when electric field is applied these rays uh, bend uh, or adopt a parabolic path and move uh, bends towards inward it means these rays consist of negatively charged particles and uh, it was found that uh, uh, whatever be the gas taken inside the discharging tube the charge to mass ratio for these rays for the particles of these rays it remains constant it means the particles present in cathode rays rather these are the fundamental or having universal existence in each type of matter and these particles we are named as electrons now the next experiment was about positive rays when in discharging tube the cathode is taken perforated having holes then it is found then that the other type of rays that uh, uh, pass pass through the holes of the uh, cathode and in opposite side when the these strike on the uh, wall of the discharging tube coated with zinc sulfide these are going to produce fluorescence so these rays are rather known as canal rays because they pass through the holes of the perforated cathode and uh, when we take hydrogen gas inside uh, the discharging tube at very low pressure then the charge to mass ratio for these rays uh, that is for positive rays is found maximum because mass of the atom of an hydrogen atom is least so these rays uh, that is the positive rays travel uh, in a straight line they are deflected by uh, electric and magnetic field also the number of and rod rays depend upon the nature of gas charge to mass ratio that is e by m or a specific charge ratio for anode rays is not constant it depends on the gas taking inside the discharging tube and it is found maximum for hydrogen gas because mass uh, for the atom of an hydrogen of hydrogen gas is the least mass so e by m becomes maximum but the charge to mass ratio for cathode rays it is constant whatever be the gas taken inside the discharging tube now in this way with the help of discharging tube and other experiments three types of fundamental particles or subatomic particles were found inside an atom these these are proton neutron and electron proton and neutron both have a unit mass but the electron its mass is negligible charge on an on a proton and an electron is same and uh, on proton it is 1.6 into 10 raised to power minus 19 whereas 19 coulomb whereas on electron it is minus 1.60 into 10 raised to power minus 19 coulomb the mass in amu of a proton is 1.007825 amu whereas mass of neutron it is 1.008665 amu 
and the mass in amu of an electron is 5.489 into 10 raised to power minus 8 amu now after the discoveries of these type of subatomic particles that is three type of subatomic particles first of all thomson proposed a model about an atom that in what way these type of particles reside inside an atom and he proposed a watermelon model according to this model of an atom the uh, uh, the uh, entire part of an atom is the positive sphere in which electrons remain rem embedded just like uh, when in the red flash of a watermelon elec uh, uh, black, its black seeds remain embedded but that type of model of Thomson could not explain the stability of an atom because elec uh, the, uh, in the close existence of positive and negative charge will going to destroy one another so uh, that is that could not explain the stability of an atom now uh, after that rutherford carried out famous uh, experiment which is called alpha particles scattering experiment in which alpha particles from a source are made to fall uh, on a thin gold foil then it is found that uh, most of the particles are uh, uh, undeflected or these goes without scattering but the um, uh, but uh, some particles get deflected by an angle greater than 90 and very uh, least particles very uh, few particles one or two particles from billions of particles uh, come back to, uh, tracing their original path so according to this experiment uh, uh, it, uh, some type of uh, conclusions we are made and these are known as Rutherford's experimental results uh, uh, what are these uh, according to these uh, uh, experiment the results or experiment a beam of alpha particle when aimed at a thin gold foil what happens most of the particles passed through without uh, any scattering or deflection so it has a mother we have a particular conclusion or a space uh, mother uh, that type of conclusion that most of the space of an atom is empty a few came back means presence of concentrated mass at the center which has positive charge other deflected at various angles showing that there is there is a strong electrostatic repulsion in between the two positively charged particles like firing cells at paper handkerchief with few of them uh, goes uh, deflected other uh, uh, most of uh, them pass through uh, the uh, thin foil the same case happens with that uh, gold foil Rutherford's model atom consists of two parts according to Rutherford model nucleus al almost the whole mass of the atom concentrated in this small region extra nuclear part this is the space around the nucleus in which electrons are revolving at high speed in fixed part so according to rutherford's model uh, in the very small part of an atom uh, there is the whole charge positive charge and its mass and electrons revolve around the nucleus uh, in in the same way as uh, planets revolve around the sun so that is also known as planetary model of an atom Mm. Uh, as planets uh, revolve around the sun and also spin about their axis in the same fashion electrons revolve around the nucleus as well as the spin about their axis so that type of model is known as planetary model of an atom but that model also failed to explain number of facts about the atom that is it also it could not explain the stability of uh, an atom concept of atomic mass and atomic number what is atomic mass atomic mass it is the number of protons plus number of neutrons inside the nucleus so it is a whole number uh, that is uh, but the atomic number it is the number of protons inside the nucleus as we know that an ele electrically an atom is neutral 
that is number of protons is equal to number of electrons that is therefore we can also express the um, atomic number by the number of electrons now uh, for uh, sodium atom we know that uh, there are 11 protons in its uh, nucleus so its atomic number is 11 whereas there are 12 neutrons in its nucleus so total number of uh, protons and neutrons inside the nucleus is 11 plus 12 that is 23 so mass number of sodium atom is 23 whereas atomic number is 11 uh, mass number rather later on we will discuss that the atomic number of an element it is its uh, uh, characteristics property and all its chemical properties depend on the number of uh, protons that is the its atomic number now concept of atomic number and atomic mass uh, generally when we take talk about atomic weight then it is the mass or weight of an atom uh, expressed in terms of amu that is an uh, that is how many times an atom is heavier in comparison to one hydrogen atom we express weight of at in an atom in terms of atomic mass amu mass of proton is approximately mass of neutron it is taken equal to 1 amu so in case uh, mass number of sodium atom is 23 so we can take its uh, atomic weight is approximately 23 amu mass number is approximately equal to atomic weight and which is uh, expressed in amu uh, but the, remember one thing that mass number is a whole number whereas atomic weight is not a whole number now drawback of Rutherford's model according to electromagnetic theory we know that whenever a particle having charge and move with high velocity it is going to produce electromagnetic waves so same case happens to an electron revolving around the nucleus in Rutherford model it and, and it is going uh, to uh, lose its uh, energy in the form of electromagnetic waves gradually and that is why its velocity will decrease rather uh, the force uh, acting on an electron in outward direction that is uh, centrifugal force will decrease and that is why the force which attracts the electrons towards the nucleus will be effective and it will drag the electron towards the nucleus and grows gradually its a, a radius of revolution will go on decreasing and ultimately it will fall into the nucleus and the electron is going to lose uh, its existence and that is that is why we can say that Rutherford's model uh, could not explain the stability of an atom uh, in case if uh, electrons are going to revolve around the nucleus in uh, uh, that type of planetary uh, orbits as such in uh, solar system as planets revolves around the uh, sun so in thus uh, we have a drawback in Rutherford's model that uh, ultimately the atom will collapse and uh, it will lose its existence so the Rutherford models also failed to explain the stability of an atom we have and uh, rather we know that the substance is stable or an atom is stable particle so uh, that type of model is model is also failed to explain the stability of an atom now next thing is electromagnetic waves what happens in electromagnetic waves whenever uh, there are vibrations in electric vector and magnetic vector in perpendicular direction then these type of vibrations produce uh, certain type of impulses which carry energy uh, these type of uh, um, impulses uh, are known as electromagnetic waves so electric vector 
एंड मैग्नेटिक वेक्टर इन इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स दे वाइब्रेट परपेंडिकुलरली टू वन एन अदर वेयर इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स इज फाउंड परपेंडिकुलर टू बोथ दीज सो दिस टाइप ऑफ वेव्स आर प्रोड्यूस्ड व्हेन इलेक्ट्रिक एंड मैग्नेटिक फील्ड वाइब्रेट सो व्हाट आर द करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ दीज वेव्स दीज वेव्स ऑल टाइप ऑफ दीज वेव्स दैट इज वी हैव रेडियो वेव्स माइक्रो वेव्स इंफ्रारेड विजिबल लाइट ultraviolet rays x rays gamma rays and cosmic rays all these are electromagnetic waves all these waves will have a velocity 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second in uh, vacuum or in air now uh, uh, direction of propagation of wave uh, it is perpendicular to both electric vector and magnetic vector we know about the wavelength it is the Uh, distance in between the two consecutive crest or two consecutive troughs so it is rather very easy uh, lambda of electromagnetic waves is expressed in nanometer or angstrom meter uh, of uh, frequency of uh, these type of uh, waves that is electromagnetic waves do not uh, um uh, that is very high frequency and uh, uh, these type of waves uh, do not require any medium or media for their propagation propagation frequency we know that number of waves passes through a given point in one second it is represented uh, by new uh, its unit is hertz or per second velocity the linear distance traveled by a crest or a uh, trough in one second its unit is centimeter per second uh, <coughs> wave number it is the number of waves present in one centimeter length and it is represented by, by lambda that is wave number is reciprocal of uh, wave length uh, of electromagnetic waves uh, <coughs> uh, wave velocity it is lambda upon time period that is in one time period the wave travel a distance which is called wave length now we take here electromagnetic spectrum what is spectrum when light from certain source uh, is made to pass through a prism it splits into different colors and that type of colored pattern is known as spectrum right so we take when white light and when it is allowed to pass through a prism uh, we have a uh, seven color patterns with given and uh, its uh, wavelength uh, varies from 400 to 700 uh, uh, nanometer electromagnetic waves hmm. uh, in continuation uh, uh, spectrum uh, it is the part of uh, splitting of uh, white light into different seven different color so here is the pattern given for electromagnetic waves electric vector and magnetic vector these two are vibrating in perpendicular direction whereas wave propagates in forward direction light is an oscillating electromagnetic field oscillating electric field generate the magnetic field and vice versa eh? so these two are related to one another electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other in electromagnetic waves and their vibrations are perpendicular to one another now here are some problems about uh, the atomic models we based on atomic models that is the radio city broad broadcast on a frequency of 5090 kilohertz what is the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation emitted by the transmitter so we know that lambda is equal to c upon nu c is equal to 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second so lambda is equal to 3 into 10 raised to power 8 divided by 5090 into 10 raised to power 3 that comes out equal to 0.589 into 10 raised to power 2 uh, 
uh, meter that is 58.9 uh, meter Next is radiant energy is emitted or absorbed uh, discontinuously in the form of quanta. Next one is Max Planck's quantum theory. According to this theory, radiation energy emitted or absorbed is, all, is found always in a discontinuous pattern and uh, it is always discrete. So, the, uh, the uh, part of the uh, energy that is being absorbed or emitted in the form of a certain unit which is which we call quanta and that is equal to h nu where h is Planck constant and nu is the frequency of radiation. So uh, the second problem is uh, the ratio of energy of a photon uh, of 2000 angstrom wavelength radiation to that of 6000 uh, angstrom radiation is uh, that is equal to h nu so h c upon lambda e1 equal to h c upon lambda 1 and e2 equal to h c upon lambda 2 so e1 upon e2 equal to lambda 2 upon lambda 1 that is 6000 angstrom divided by 2000 angstrom that is equal to 3 is to 1 so according to max planck uh, quantum theory the radiation energy absorbed or emitted it is always discrete and discontinuous in the it is all absorbed in the form of energy packets and one energy packet it has a bundle it is the bundle of energy packet that its energy is equal to h nu where h is planck constant and nu is the frequency of radiation. Now Bohr's model. So according to Bohr's model, uh, Bohr's carried out certain type of remedies for Rutherford's model. He stated that uh, till an electron revolving round the nucleus in its own orbit, it is not going to release or lose or absorb energy and uh, these energy levels or these uh, or energy orbits are rather uh, are known as a stable energy orbits. So uh, these uh, are Bohr's postulates. Uh, what uh, certain type of what uh, uh, particular or a special uh, postulations uh, had been adopted by Bohr these that the retained key features of the Rutherford's model yeah, that is he predicted he stated that the there is no change electrons revolve round the nucleus but the concept of uh, stationary circular orbits he introduced the concept of stationary circular orbits yeah, he stated that uh, uh, while an electron revolve ra revolving round the nucleus in its own orbit it is not going to release or absorb energy. He stated that the angular momentum of an electron revolving around the nucleus is remains it remains quantized and mvr is equal to nh upon 2 pi. If a particular atom is is nth orbit and its velocity is v and uh, its uh, radius of revolution is r then its angular momentum is mvr and it must be integral multiple of h upon 2 pi means around the nucleus only those type of orbits uh, are permitted in which the uh, revolving electron uh, its uh, revolving electrons have an angular momentum mvr m into v into r should be the integral multiple of h upon 2 pi so according to Bohr's model, velocity of electron 
force postulates radius of various orbits energy of electron so energy and the angular momentum uh, these are related in such a way for an electron in both orbits that the angular momentum of an electron must be integral multiple of h upon 2 pi that is for the first orbit it is h upon 2 pi for the second stationary orbit it is 2 h upon 2 pi for the third stationary orbit it is 3 h upon 2 pi so according to coulomb's law calculation of radius of bohr's orbit right? suppose an electron is revolving in a radius r round the nucleus so electrostatic force according to coulomb's law that f a is equal to k into z e into e divided by r square z e is the charge of the nucleus where e is the charge of an electron z is atomic number so calculation of radius of bohr's orbit it is continued here m and uh, a force it is equal to k into z e square divided by r square now the centrifugal force on an electron it is m u square upon r so these two forces will be uh, in balanced state that is the electrostatic force will balance the centrifugal force on an electron so that is k into z e square upon r square is equal to mv square upon r so u square here is equal to k into z e square divided by m into r now according to Bohr concept the angular momentum mv r is equal to nh upon 2 pi where the electron is revolving in nth orbit that is so u equal to nh upon 2 pi uh, mr or u square equal to uh, 4 pi uh, is, uh, square yeah. now calculation of radius and also so u square equal to k into z e square divided by m into r u square equal to now n square h square divided by 4 pi square m square r square so k into z e square divided by m into r is equal to n square h square divided by 4 pi square m square r square so here r comes out r equal to n square h square divided by 4 pi square m into k into z e square for hydrogen atom z is equal to 1 for n equal to 1 z equal to 1 k is equal to 9 into 10 raised to power 9 newton into meter square per coulomb square so r comes out uh, uh, equal to 0 0.529 into 10 raised to power minus uh, 8 angstrom <laughs> calculation of velocity of electron mv r equal to nh upon 2 pi and k z e square upon r square is equal to mv square upon r now with the help of these two dividing 1 by 2 we get u equal to 2 pi k into z e square divided by n into h u is in meter per second u is the velocity with which the electron revolve in an orbit suppose we calculation on number of revolutions number of revolutions in per second in one second so number of revolutions will be uh, v upon 2 pi r that is the velocity of an electron and uh, divided by the length of the of length of its path that is the length of the circumference so number of revolutions revolutions per second equal to velocity of electron divided by circumference of an orbit
and velocity of electron as we calculated uh, divided by 2 pi r so calculation of energy of an electron total energy that is kinetic energy plus potential energy kinetic energy of electron is half mu square and the potential energy it is negative because the electron being in bounded state that is potential energy equal to minus k into z e square divided by r so total energy is equal to half mu square minus k z e square divided by r we know that mu r is equal to n h upon 2 pi and also m v square upon r is equal to k z e square upon r square so m v u square is equal to k z e square divided by r so equal to k z e square divided by 2 r substituting the value of m u square minus k z e square upon r so that is minus k z e square upon 2 r now substituting the value of r we get equal to e n equal to minus 2 pi square z square e power 4 m into k square divided by n square into h square p e is equal to 2 k e now Bohr's model Vn that is the velocity of electron in nth orbit it is 2.18 into 10 raised to power 8 divided by z upon n in centimeter per second rn equal to 0 0.529 into n square divided by z in angstrom and uh, energy of the electron in nth orbit is minus 13.6 into z square divided by n square in electron volt per atom now the problem 3 here the energy of an electron in the second and third bore orbit of hydrogen atom is minus 5.42 into 10 raised to power minus 12 and uh, minus 2.41 into 10 raised to power minus 12 respectively calculate the wavelength of the emitted radiation when the electron drops from the third to second orbit so when electron jumps from third to second orbit the change in its energy is equal to delta e there is delta e is equal to hc upon lambda so delta e equal to e2 minus e1 and that is equal to minus 5.42 into 10 raised to power minus 12 minus minus 2.41 into 10 raised to power minus 12 arcs that comes out minus 3.01 into 10 raised to power minus 12 arcs and that is equal to hc upon lambda according to Planck's quantum theory so equal to h nu and equal to hc upon lambda 
behind lambda is the wavelength h equal to 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power minus 27 arcs substituting these values we have the following results here now lambda equal to hc upon e so substituting the value of h and c c equal to h equal to 6.6 .6, 2 into 10 raised to power minus 27 equal to 3 into 10 raised to power 8 and equal to 3.01 into 10 raised to power minus 12 so that comes out lambda equal to 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power minus 5 centimeter or 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power 3 angstrom one angstrom is equal to 10 raised to power minus 8 centimeter now the next exercise which of the following fundamental particles are present in nucleus of an atom alpha particles and protons protons and neutrons protons and electrons electrons and protons and neutrons so as we know inside the nucleus there are the particles protons and neutrons so uh, that is option B is correct exercise 2 the mass of the proton is number 1 a number a 1.672 into 10 raised to power minus 20 gram b is 1.672 into 10 raised to power minus 24 5 gram c is 1.672 into 10 raised to power 25 gram and d is 1.672 into 10 raised to power 26 gram the mass of proton is equal to 1.672 into 10 raised to power minus 24 gram so that is option A is correct exercise 3 Which of the following is not true in case of an electron? It is fundamental particle, it has wave nature, its motion is affected by magnetic field, it emits energy while moving in a orbit. So we know that according to Bohr postulates, uh, till an electron in its orbit revolving around the nucleus, it is not going to emit or absorb energy and that is why the option uh, D is correct class exercise 4 now Positive charge of an atom is concentrated in the nucleus, revolved round the nucleus, is scattered all over the atom, none of these. We know that uh, the entire positive charge according to alpha S S scattering experiment carried out by Rutherford, entire positive charge reside inside the nucleus which is very small part of an atom. So, we and we'll say here yeah, that the option A is correct.
now the next exercise uh, is exercise number 5 calculate and compare the energies of the two radiations which have wavelengths 6000 angstrom and 4000 angstrom h is given 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power minus 34 joule into second c equal to 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second even equal to hc upon lambda substituting these values we get 3 uh, e1 equal to 3.3 .3 into 10 raised to power minus 19 joule whereas e2 equal to according to hc upon lambda uh, that comes out 4.9 into 10 raised to power minus 19 joules so e1 upon e2 equal to 3.3 .3 into 10 raised to power minus 19 joule divided by 4.95 into 10 raised to power minus 19 joule that is 0.666 is to 1 then now the next exercise is exercise number 6 why only very few alpha particles are deflected back on hitting a thin gold foil because we know that uh, in the very small part of an atom that is uh, entire its entire positive charge remain concentrated at that point that is known as nucleus so that is why uh, very few particles or one or two particles among billions of particles come back because they are just uh, going to they were just going to strike the nucleus and there is a strong electrostatic repulsion which uh, uh, throws them back so that is why uh, very few particles uh, come back in alpha scattering experiment now the exercise 7 explain why cathode rays are produced only when the pressure in discharging tube is very low So this is happened because at high pressure no electric current flows through the tube as gases are poor conductor of electricity okay? and uh, therefore the possibility of flow of charge through the discharging tube is not possible at uh, very high pressure so that is why uh, pressure is reduced exercise number 8 if a neutron is introduced into the nucleus of an atom uh, it would result in the change of number of electrons atomic number atomic weight chemical nature of the atom so it is going to change atomic number uh, it is going to change atomic weight Neutrons contribute in the major way to the weight of the nucleus, thus addition of neutron would result in increase in atomic weight. So option C is correct. Exercise number 9. The concept of stationary orbit lies in the fact that electrons are stationary. No change in energy takes place in a stationary orbit. Electrons gain kinetic energy. Energy goes on increasing. So this concept was uh, a postulation by Niels Bohr that uh, the electron till it moving in its uh, stationary orbit it is not going to lose or gain energy that is why no change in energy takes place in a stationary orbit when an electron revolves in a stationary orbit no energy change takes place energy is emitted or absorbed only when the electron jumps from one orbit to other orbit or 
uh, it comes from one to another orbit now exercise number 10 what is the energy possessed by one mole of photons of radiation of frequency 1.0 into 10 raised to power 14 hertz so we know that the energy of photon is equal to h nu where h is Planck constant and nu is the frequency of radiation so equal to 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power minus 34 into 10 into 10 raised to power 14 that is equal to 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power minus 19 joules energy of one mole of photon is equal to 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to power minus 19 into Avogadro number that is 6.023 into 10 raised to power 23 and which is equal to 397.518 kilojoule per mole now here is the test the radius of hydrogen atom in ground state is 5.3 into 10 raised to power minus 11 meter it will have a radius of 4.77 angstrom after colliding with an electron the principal quantum number of the atom in excited state is since uh, radius equal to rn equal to r0 into n square upon z so 4.77 into 10 raised to power minus 10 is equal to 5.3 into 10 raised to power minus 11 into n square divided by 1 for hydrogen atom so n square equal to 9 that n comes 